Good morning, Ridgeville Elementary School. Hope you're having a great day. Um, it's been great to see some warmer weather this week, see the snow melt, and hopefully move our way into spring a little bit. So I uh, wish you a great month of March. Thank you for all you've done. Uh, today I have a book uh, donated by Andrew and Stephanie Mertz. So thank you for your kind donation to our library. Uh, today we have The Tale of the Valiant Ninja Frog. Let's find out about this ninja frog. <clears throat> the stars twinkled, the moon shone, and Dad, Jamie, and Abby sat by a campfire toasting marshmallows. Tell us a story, Dad, said Jamie. Yes, a story, said Abby. What kind of story, asked Dad. One with a prince, said Jamie. And the frog, said Abby. And the princess and the witch, said Jamie. Don't forget the frog, said Abby. And, said Jamie, a monster. Right, said Dad. Ready? It was a dark and stormy night, said Dad, and at the bottom of a horrible mountain in the shadow of a horrible castle, deep within a horrible forest, were the heroes. There was a prince and his horse, handsome, brave, and bold. There was the princess, cunning, beautiful, and secretly known as Fingers Mally, daredevil, jewel thief. And there was a bogart, the witch, the witch. Magical, mysterious, and occasionally a ninja. What about the frog? asked Abby. Oh, yes, said Dad. There was also the witch's tiny frog, just as big as your thumb, who she kept tucked away nice and safe. He's always being kept safe, complained Abby. Can't he be a hero too? He's too small, said Jamie. But he's very brave. Too small, said Jamie. Hmm, said Abby. That frog doesn't look very happy. Our heroes, said Dad, were there because of the dreadful ogre named Gruber the Gruesome. Gruber the Gruesome was enormous. He had warts the size of plates, his hands were as big as tables, and the breath from his vast mouth carried the awful stench of broccoli. Yuck, said Jamie. I like broccoli, said Abby. He was a rotten meanie, said Dad, and he'd stolen all the keys to the kingdom. Without their keys, no one could do anything. They couldn't get into their homes. They couldn't start their horses. It was chaos. Hmm. Keys to start the horses. Like the time I accidentally dropped your keys down the drain? Asked Jamie. Yes, said Dad. Exactly like that. Gruber had hidden the keys in a deep dungeon in his home, Castle Normus. But our heroes had a cunning plan. That evening, as Gruber sat in his parlor, chuckling to himself about how rotten he was, there was a knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. Who dares disturb me? Bellowed the ogre. It was the heroes. We're circus performers, they said. We're here to entertain you. Behold, said the prince, the incredible skills of Andrew the Amazing Horse. Andrew the Amazing Horse could do all sorts of tricks, such as standing on his head. Hmm. Juggling, said Jamie. Yes, juggling, said Dad. And walking the tightrope, said Jamie. Sure, said Dad. Why not? But while Andrew the Amazing Horse distracted the ogre, the princess and the witch sneaked past. Here they go. The witch waved her wicked wand and shook her furtive feet. She hissed a crooked curse and glared an evil eye and turned the dungeon door into jello. Then the princess threw her grappling rope and leapt and swung down, down, down to the bottom of the dungeon. And there they were, all the keys to the kingdom. Wait, said Abby, what did Barry do? Who is Barry, asked Dad. Barry the frog. What did he do? Oh said Dad. Um, Barry kept lookout. That's boring, said Abby. Barry never gets to do anything. I told you, said Jamie. He's far too small to be important. Hmm, <laughs> muttered Abby again. The princess scooped up the keys, said Dad, and the witch hauled her back. But then suddenly the alarm went off, shouted Jamie. That's right, said Dad. A huge clanging bell rang through the castle. And then Gruber ran after them and caught them all shouted Jamie. He did, said Dad, in his huge hairy fist, and then said Jamie. Gruber roared. I'm going to gobble you up, 
Wow, look, he's pretty mean. Oh, no, gasped Dad and Abby. So how did they escape? Asked Jamie. Oh, said Dan. Dad. Um, he stopped. He scratched his head. I don't know. I know, said Abby. Wait, I know, shouted Jamie. The prince fights Gruber. But Gruber's too strong, said Dad. I know, said Abby. Maybe the witch does some magic, said Jamie. But she can't wave her wand to cast a spell, said Dad. Stop, shouted Abby. I know what happens. Barry, the valiant ninja frog, rescues them all. No, 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 said, sighed Jamie. He can't fight Gruber. He's far too small. Exactly, said Abby. He was so small that he could creep between Gruber's fingers. And then Barry, who was also a ninja, snuck around Gruber's back and then onto his head. And Gruber stumbled about and lost his balance and fell over. And he dropped the others, and together they tied him up. And everyone got their keys back, and they said, Thank you, Barry, the valiant ninja frog. You have saved us, because even though he was small, he was still a great hero. The end, said Abby. Wow, said Jamie. Good story. Well done, Abby, said Dad. Thank you, said Abby. Barry did most of it. The campfire had died down, and it was almost time for bed. Jamie and Abby snuggled up close to Dad and gazed at the night sky and the twinkling stars above them. What story shall we have tomorrow? Yawned Jamie sleepily. What do you think, Abby? Asked Dad. Abby looked at the stars. Hmm, she said. I know. Space pirate bears. Of course, said Dad, and he tucked them into their camp beds and kissed them good night. The end. Hope you enjoyed our book today. Great book. Check it out. Um, awesome book that was donated to our elementary library. Have a great day, everyone.